The key to making change is to feel more. Is to allow yourself to feel ugly feelings while you're moving in the direction of your goal. Hey everyone, Mike Stokes here. Today I'd like to talk about confusion, mild depression, and making goals and how they're all related in this time after the holidays and um, before or during the holidays before the new year um, it's really the time when we all go inside and try to figure out what is next for us um, and the problem is is that we go inside and try to figure out what's next for us at the same time that we're dealing with old relationships with our family and with ourself, um, with our loved ones, with our spouse. Um, and it's, uh, it's really difficult for most of us. Um, I feel like what I can best do, so this video is for anyone who is feeling at the moment of watching this, a little confused about your future, um, maybe a little sad and depressed, depressed, maybe lacking energy, um, and really wanting to make a change. Um, so, I think teachers who claim to have gotten somewhere and sort of teach from that place don't really aren't really being honest. You know, I mean, I went to so many workshops and I've read so many books and I myself was trying to figure out how to be a teacher where um, I could, you know, tell all of you about all of my great things and how you would then want to um, listen to what I had to say because somehow uh, my solving these problems would rub off on you. Now, there's a little bit of truth to that. You know, I don't want to follow somebody who's just life is a mess and they're always complaining. But there's also a little bit of falseness in that too. Because if I'm just looking at you, let's say you're my teacher, and I'm looking at everything that's great about you. Like, oh, you've you got a nice house. You've got a wonderful relationship. You've, um, you're have you making plenty of money. You're going on vacations. You have a meaningful career and you're making the planet a better place. Um, you're helping others. Um, you have lots of adventure, yet you're grounded. Um, you can talk about the highest of high philosophies, but yet you're still, still in the earth and creating good things. So what I've done is I've just projected, in my mind, my image of myself in my perfect life onto you. And the problem with that is, is that when we try to follow somebody else's path, um, we inevitably fall short because something that worked for them doesn't work for us. So right now, I've been struggling with how to teach. Um, and so here's how teaching, how, how uh, goals and um, confusion, uh, depression, lack of energy, how they all sort of meet. Um, on the winter solstice, I set an intention of getting past all the blocks that I had to be the teacher that I've always dreamed of. Now, <clears throat> if you've ever done something like that where you said, okay, I'm going to be the fittest person that I've ever been, and I'm going to manifest my dreams, um, you know, that's totally possible. The problem is, is that normally what happens is that we rub up against all of the things that stop us from doing that. So uh, that's where I'm at. I'm rub bumped up against everything that's stopping me from being the teacher that I've always wanted to be, from being the thought leader that I've always wanted to be, that I know I can be, but I have a block, right? Like we all, we would all be these great, prolific, amazing entrepreneurs and artists and craftsmen and adventurers, except we hit these blocks. So the problem is, is that when we hit a block, it's invisible to us. So my block it is mostly invisible to me. And it's interesting because going in the sauna and cooking my, literally cooking my body at 140 degrees, 
starts to break through a little bit of those blockages. And I resist coming in here because I think on a practical level, I'll be wiped out and I won't be able to chop wood and, you know, fix the fridge that I need to do. But the truth is, is that if you want to accomplish something big, you're going to have to burn in a way. And it's interesting that in the winter solstice, what we're doing is we're, we're calling in the birth of a new sun. So the sun has cycled through its darkest pattern, and then we're birthing it into its light pattern. Now that's for the northern hemisphere, obviously. Um, uh, the winter solstice is the same for the southern hemisphere, it's just the other half of the year. Um, so in the, winter, in, the, in the southern hemisphere, watch this on June 21st or around there. In the, in the northern hemisphere, you want to watch it closer to, to now. Um, so again, I'm going to keep returning back to the main point. The main point is, if you're feeling confused, depressed, lacking energy, and you're seeking change, and you're really trying to set goals for yourself, um, what we need is, is we need to, uh, this is really interesting, in a loving way, we have to face our demons. Now, our demons, a lot of times we try to kill our demons, which oftentimes doesn't work. And Joseph Campbell has a wonderful saying of saying, you know, be careful. Um, it, it's maybe not his sayings, maybe somebody else's, but be careful of exercising your demons that you do not throw out the best part of yourself in the process. So we need to face our demons. But a lot of times when we're facing our demons, we either need to negotiate with them or let them or see them in a new light where we can see that they uh, help us. So, for example, I've been doing some dream work lately. Um, based on Jungian philosophy and, and uh, specifically on Robert Johnson's uh, wonderful book, Inner Work, in which where he really lays out how to work with your dreams. You know, most of us fail miserably at that. But if you follow his method, it's, it's really good. Um, uh, one of the best things about his method is in the end of his book, he talks about how you basically just have to keep circling around the dream. You have to keep circling around that unconscious part of yourself. Keep putting effort and energy into it. And then at some point, that barrier, that wall between you and what you've been fighting to discover or transform will just come crashing down. It's not like you have to hit it with a jackhammer. Actually, in a lot of ways, if you hit it with a jackhammer, it doesn't work. Because the subconscious it wants you to go in a different direction and you're trying to hit it with the conscious mind. So just a, a brief note on when you're tr working with sadness or confusion or fear, um, we tend to go straight to the conscious mind and think that we can think of a conscious solution and that'll be good enough. And if we just work harder, faster, deeper, put more pain at it, whatever, that it'll throw more resistance, throw more embracing pain at it, that that'll uh, solve the problem. And the conscious mind is really only, let's call it 1% of the mind. It's probably less than that. So what I'm doing right now, using my conscious mind, is, is a pittance of what the consciousness that I am, my whole body, my whole being, that I am a part of, you know, including my connection to the unconscious parts of my brain and my body, and also including the connection that I have to the greater world, you know. Um, most people in the modern era don't accept mythology as true. They accept mythology as a story, you know, something to sort of be scoffed at. Like, ha, 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 you know, that's so funny that uh, Arthur pulled the sword from the stone. But there's another part of that that rings true. We all sort of resonate with that, finding that resistance within ourselves where we can't actually get to the pure of heart and pull that stone, that sword out of our stone. So we can use that sword in, in the words of Manchu Shri, or in the, in the symbolism of Manchu Shri, a Tibetan, uh, Tibetan um, symbol god. You take the sword and you slice through the ignorance of your life. So in a lot of ways, we're not able to slice through the ignorance of our life with our sword of discrimination because we cannot find the pure heart. So back to the issue. The issue at hand is how do you deal with confusion, with stagnation, and with mild depression? Really big depression, you probably should seek medical help. 
But if you're able to mostly function in life and you get stuck sometimes, I think these things will hurt. Will hurt. Uh, I don't think these things will hurt. Let's see, was there an unconscious slip there? I suppose. So another, this is thing that I'm currently practicing with. Try to honor what the subconscious is doing. So in some way, I said that these things could hurt. That was, uh, my mind wasn't thinking, my, my mouth said it. So I'm going to honor that. I'm going to say, yeah, maybe some of this stuff can hurt. If it's done without sufficient support or with sufficient um, guidance uh, or with sufficient patience. If you try to dive into these subconscious realms without enough grounding in you know, support, guidance, and patience, then um, you can really get lost. And, you know, it, it, it's... There's a reason that psychology is both the key to unlock your happiness and also the place where people go to schizophrenic insanity and end up in a hospital. It's because the, the line between ecstatic joy and um, multi-personality possession is razor thin. And in our culture, we don't have a language for that. We think that you're either healthy or you're sick. The truth is, is that we're, we're all of it all the time. And we're always doing battle with ourselves in one way or another. Um, the shaman or the master or the, or the uh, you know, the mystic, what they end up doing is they end up battling those parts of themselves, really negotiating with those parts of themselves and, and listening to those parts of themselves and feeling more deeply than they felt before with a courageous equanimity. So when you feel with a courageous equanimity what has been not felt and you're able to hold it with support, with patience, with guidance, then you can transcend it. So a lot of times we try to um, just beat through the pain or we try to avoid the pain or we try to cheat our way through with psychedelic substances or just numb it out with alcohol or marijuana or television or romance novels or uh, social media is the latest greatest drug of all time social media will carry your attention for years if you let it it will completely shut you off to your unconscious self and carry you for years so it's it's i think therein therein lies the great lesson so one of the points that I really want to leave you with is that I'm only a participant on the path and I can only show you those things that have been already revealed to me and continue to struggle within my own path. And sometimes I'm going to produce amazing results and sometimes I'm not going to produce any results, you know, like one of the amazing, I'm going to say amazing results because we all want to hear the amazing results. You know, I, I decided years ago that I wanted to have a self-sufficient homestead, large property in the woods. That was 20 years ago I decided that. I wrote it down on a slip of paper, I stapled it to my wall, and I knew it was going to take a long time. You know, maybe it wouldn't have taken a long time, but I was ready for it to take a long time. And it took me about 16 years to get to the property. And my other goal was to have it without a huge load of debt. And I worked, and I failed, and I cried, and I wasted time, and eventually I achieved that goal. Um, so now I live on uh, about 60 acres um, in Northern California with very dilapidated houses and shops and slides and fire hazards and lots of problems. But I made it to that new destination that I said that I wanted. I also said that I wanted a wife and a child. Um, well, I wanted more than one child. At this point, I want more than one child. And I've, I've accomplished having a wife and a beautiful wife and a beautiful child and a beautiful life together. Um, now, that's not to say that we don't have problems. We have plenty of problems. And there's plenty of joy. So what I want to do is I want to pierce through this idea that somehow if you achieve your goal of getting better at things, um, that you're going to transcend your pain. You're going to transcend your stagnation. You're going to transcend suffering. Um, you know, I mean, suffering, pain, suffering. Yeah, I, I think on one level, I used to think that suffering was negotiable. Like if you just saw it as pain, that you could just uh, feel the pain 
and then if you didn't resist the pain that it would go away but um, but if you really want to do the deep work you have to let the suffering in if you really want to transcend where you are you have to let the suffering in now the thing about that is is that if you are suffering immensely you run the risk of recoiling and dropping back into old numbing habits social media whatever your flavor is romance novels I don't even like bringing up drugs and alcohol because they're so peripheral they're so you know 1988 you know now it's social media that's what numbs everyone out so you have to realize that you have a certain numbing reflex and honor that just be cool with it just know that you're gonna numb and then just keep working your way towards feeling feeling more and more and more the other thing you need to do is you have to have guidance um, you have to have some people that you look up towards now I have um, book teachers I have uh, an author who's still alive. I, I, I follow Stephen Pressfield. He is my new sort of spiritual mentor that's alive. I follow the teachings of Joseph Campbell, um, Carl Jung, uh, and uh, Robert Johnson. Those are all gurus of mine, so to speak. I don't like the word guru either. They are people that I give authority in my own mind, and therefore they have authority over how I traverse the world. And the reason I give them authority is because of their amazing track record of creating powerful change in the world. I also have other uh, people that I look up to that are teachers, like like Gandhi, and um, you know he's controversial, but the founder of the uh, Est training, Warner Earhart. Um, I really look up to the the good work that he's done that transcends his ego, um, and I, I look up to. I even look up to Elon Musk for what he has transcended in order to create a vision that is truly unique and truly beyond social norms. I'm, he's not perfect. I'm not justifying all of his actions. So any of you who hate Elon Musk, um, fine, hate him. Just know that you need a pantheon of support that's outside of yourself, of guidance. Now, support looks more like people. Um, I have a spiritual therapist. I mean, he's a therapist, but he's very well versed in the spiritual dynamics of life. Um, and he's where I go when I feel completely lost, when I can't sort of get my head around things. Now, I wish I could give you an answer that would have you transcend all need of outside support but I think that's the myth the myth is is somehow we can be a lone wolf um, in a lot of ways we can gain some great insight from those times I myself spent 30 days alone in the wilderness um, and looked for that insight I fasted for 10 days inside a tent and did not leave my little temple for 10 days while the bears were harvesting around me and growling in the middle of the night now, I gained a certain amount of insight from that, but not the kind of insight I wanted. That's the thing you have to realize, is that insight doesn't come, true insight does not come in the way you want it to come. It comes, it's from the subconscious. So the subconscious gives you what it can give you um, that the conscious is willing to hear. Um, my particular lesson at that point in my life, in my uh, early 30s, was to, um, this being more than 17, 18 years ago, was to stop resisting aloneness. I needed, at that point in my life, I needed support from people. And I constantly would think that I had to break the back of aloneness, make 100% peace with loneliness, uh, and, and, and conquer it forever. And that's not what I got. I got out in that wilderness for 30 days by myself that that will not happen, at least not at that point in my life. And what I needed to do was go back into the world and embrace people because that is part of my fundamental unconscious character I am a people person it is why I wake these make these videos why I wake these videos it's why I bring these videos up from a deeper part of myself in a hundred and forty five degree sauna because they are locked down and I feel less alive if I don't put them out into the world I recently erased not erased but uh, a little while ago, months ago, I, I put 
um, all of my videos on pause that I didn't like being in the sauna because I didn't want to present a persona that was not aligned with my conscious vision for myself. And I'm still struggling with that. You know, maybe I'll release those videos again. Maybe I won't. But, um, but I'm in negotiation right now between my conscious image of myself and my unconscious drivers in myself. And that's a big deal. You know, if you're willing to go there, it's gonna be confusing and gnarly. And that's the thing. If you're trying to create a fundamental estate change in your being, like creating from you have an estate that's a little tiny dilapidated house to a wonderful eco palace that serves humanity and nature, you're going to have to travel through like all of the great epic tales of time. You're going to have to travel through some dark valleys to get there. And you don't travel through those dark valleys at night. I mean, not at night. Well, yeah, don't travel through those dark valleys at night. Don't travel through those dark valleys alone or at night. Bring the light of your support and your guidance into those dark valleys, and then they'll help you illuminate them. Obviously, this, the, the saying is true. You must face your demons alone. But your guide is right there. You know, every if any of you watch epic movies or um, television shows that are um, of, you know, fantasies or post-apocalyptic, those are all grounded in deep mythological troops, truths, troops. Troops. Well, there's a lot of violence in a lot of those, which may or may not be appropriate. I don't know. So they're grounded in deep mythological truths. And that truth, uh, in this case, when you're facing confusion, depression, stagnation, lies in a dark place of yourself that you have to touch with light. You know, you've got to go down into the cobwebs of your unconscious and see the dirt and the muck and the rats and the dead animals and the stench and then, and then shine light on it. You know, bring your whisk broom and, and broom that stuff out and then notice what you're going to see. And I know that's a metaphor, but it's literally everything in your life that feels dark. If it feels dark, bring some support and guidance to that place and go have a conversation with it. Now, my conscious mind wants me to have more money, um, wants me to have less debt, wants me to have more retirement. Um, my life is good. I am in by no means destitute, but... My conscious mind wants more security. But right now, as we speak, I'm negotiating with my subconscious. Now here's an important thing. If you haven't read any of this type of books on this work, um, I would highly recommend, if you're into this, to study Robert Johnson's inner work. And that'll give you a really good grounding in how to do it. So the first thing is, is that you need to acknowledge the fundamental truth that everything you imagine has its roots in your subconscious self. Too often we think that our subconscious self is totally inaccessible. It's not true. Your subconscious self, it speaks to you every time you have a fantasy, a daydream, uh, a dream. In the dream time, it's fully in control. In a daydream, it's half in control and your conscious is half in control. And sometimes in a daydream, you drift off into a full subconscious world and you forget how you drove to work or you forget where you were when you're having that vision. That is literally a vision. You don't need some mystical idea of what visions are. You know, um, you know I do love the fantasy shows and I love the visions that they show. And I, the reason that I love the visions that I show is that they keep... That part of myself that's unconscious, that wants me to wake up to the visionary power within myself, wants me to see that. Wants me to go, oh, I have the power to do that visioning too. And I have to stop putting so many conscious ego constraints on that. That's not what it is. You know, as you get better at it, you'll go deeper. But the beginning always looks at letting go of your judgment of what your experience is. That's the same for visioning. It's the same for meditation. It's the same for um, any self-mastery. You know, if you're trying to master a craft, let's say tennis, um, there's a part of yourself that needs to be critical of your weaknesses and needs to transcend them. There's another part of yourself which has to vision the 
highest self that you have. And there's an interplay between those two. And I don't have the answer to that one right now. Uh, hopefully, I'll get it soon. If I have the answer to that one right now, um, you could all go home and just practice it and then achieve all your levels of mastery. But there's always a disconnect. Not always. Until you achieve the level of mastery that you're seeking. But once you set a new bar, there's a new disconnect. A new discomfort. There's a wonderful documentary that I was watching a few months ago in which I can't remember the guy's name. He's very well known as a, a poly creative in Silicon Valley. If you remember his name, put him in the comments. He um, studies dinosaurs and is a, a, a modern chef and writes books about that stuff um, and an inventor. But he was saying, and, and this was a really fundamental truth that we all should embrace. Whenever you're trying to create something new, now whether that's a skill or whether that's a state of being, um, whether that's a higher level of money in your bank account, you're going to feel disoriented, confused, maybe depressed, and maybe stagnant and resistant energy. So all of those things are part of the process. So the only thing, not the only thing, the best thing to do is to go into each one of those. Go into your depression a little bit. I know for me, my fear is always if I go into depression, that I'm going to get lost there. I'm not going to be able to come out. And that, to some degree, is true. That's why when you go into your depression, you need guidance and support. You know, maybe you need to tell your therapist, hey, I'm going to play around with these feelings of sadness, and I'm going to sit in them as long as I can. And if you have a good therapist or a good spiritual guide, they will know how to hold you Hold your inner self in a way that will guide you to the next level of what you're going to need in order to come back with the wisdom that you seek and with the new actions that you seek. So again, setting goals. So the reason that we fail, usually on our, um, you know, most people fail on their um, New Year's goals, is there's a lot of reasons. And there's a lot of scientific reasons. Um, I, I did a more pointed lecture on this, um, how to change, I think I called it. Um, I'll repost it on this site. I posted it on another site. Um, I have two lives. I have an eco-builder, homesteader life, and I have a spiritual, psychological, mythological, student-teacher life. Um, and one of my big challenges, there's a, one, there's a couple of wonderful books, which I highly recommend, but will bring up your unconscious demons, so you need to have you get guidance and support. Um, and in another video, I talk about how the support that you need needs to, the size of your goal needs to match the support that you get. And that is totally true. Um, so back to the point. Um, in my self, there are many parts. And in you, there are many parts. And I remember years ago when I was listening to Joseph Campbell driving through after doing a vision quest with um, descendants of the earth, a Native American community down in Ojai, um, who I'd been studying with for two years, uh, driving out and hearing Joseph Campbell talk about how in the Indian chakra system, now he wasn't you know, parroting the Indian system. He's, if any of you know Joseph Campbell, he studied every religion and every culture. Um, darn near every. I mean, I mean, there's probably a few that he missed in his era, but he, more than almost anybody, uh, at least in his contemporary time, he died in 1986. He was talking about how each chakra, the root, the sexual, the power center, the heart, the speaking, communicating, the visionary mind part, and then your connection to the universe or God, however you articulate that, that those parts of you are always in conflict with one another. Now that, it, I'm not sharing you this, sharing this with you because, um, because I read it. I read and studied tens of thousands of hours of teachings. This one landed in me. So that's a guidepost for you. If you're seeking a transformation you must cling to those deep teachings that don't leave you. 
Now they may leave you for a time when you get completely lost, if you're you know, just wrapped up in social media or you go down an alcoholic binge or whatever your thing is. Those signposts are guidance places for you. Now that particular teaching wasn't like revolutionary given everything that Joseph Campbell studied, but for me, all paths are individual. For me, since it landed in my psyche and didn't ever leave and I can see the road you know, I, I'm not a very visual person. When I try to vision things, it's all kind of gray and blurry and I don't see much. But in that moment, that that memory was was locked in my mind. Now, no, normally the memories that are locked in our mind are either super peak um, highs or super peak lows. This was a lesson that locked in my mind. So I haven't paid attention to that lesson for over 20 years. I actually was angry when I heard that lesson. I was mad. I was like, what do you mean? You just need to balance stuff. You don't need, they're not in competition with one another. Well, maybe they are. And maybe they are inside of me. And my experience of the current confusion and um, sadness and, uh, you know, where do I go? Um, and uh, wanting to change. Inside of that, that's a signpost for me. And I can see that if I don't honor the battle within me and really work through those issues, then I may not get where I'm going. And I need to honor that. Because there may be, you know, in, in modern spiritual culture, at least in the West, at least in the modern Christian West. I, want to, I don't want to call it the Christian West, but Christianity has had a huge influence on the West, um, as well as all of the monotheistic religions. religions uh, Islam, uh, Judaism, Christianity, and even the polytheistics now, Hinduism and Buddhism. Um, so they've all had a big impact. But some, what's, what's, I don't know Islam and I don't know Judaism that well in terms of the fundamental teaching. So if you do, let me know if this is a core of their teaching. Um, I, I, I think that it is in Islam. Uh, I'm not sure about Judaism. Um, that there's always, love is always the answer. Love will take you there. Now it's a, a sort of a modern interpretation of the teaching. And so on one level that's true. Love is always there. Love is the answer. But if you, if you negate the battles that you need to fight the conflicts that are in your way, that's not it. And I think that's what I have fallen prey to. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. You know, I want to believe more than it, just like everybody else, that all I have to do is fill my heart with love and then everything else will fall away. Um, and, and I believe that's true. It is true as like a sort of a meta concept, but there may be battles, internal battles that you have to fight in order to achieve that state of unconditional love. And that unconditional universal love isn't just handed to you. It's worked through your righteous indignation. It's worked through your unwillingness to get up at 4 a.m. and do what needs to be done to express that love in the word, world. Your unwillingness or inability or blockage to really honor the creative essence of who you are or your, your fear of if you open up your heart to love that it's going to get smashed and then you'll go into a full cycle of, of pain and, and suffering again. Um, or your fear that if you say what you truly want to say that you're going to upset so many people that you're going to be ostracized and killed or, or shut down and, and, and shut out of the group. Um, I have that fear definitely. In my throat, I can feel it. You know, the moment I start speaking about re, 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 I can't even say it, re, re, religion, the moment I start speaking about religion, I think, oh no, people are going to hate me. And that's got to be okay. And it's terrifying. And, and, and I can only go in as far as I can. And you're the same. You can only go in as far as you can. And if you try to go too far without enough guidance and support, you can get shut back down. 
Those are real fears. They're real things that happen. People die all over the world because of a repressed idea that they couldn't express. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to help you see how you can hold on to guideposts along the way, like trekking poles. You can hold on to a tree in the middle of a thunderstorm and a, and a uh, windstorm, you know, and that you can see, right? So in my, so this, you know, the symbol of the third eye, it's, it's where your brain is. You know, it's, duh, it's, it's not, doesn't take a real leap of faith to realize that this is where the vision starts. It starts up in here. And hopefully we find places for our visions and we find visions and we can ground them into our life, you know, into the ground. How can I take this crazy vision of building, I had a vision of building a waterfall. That was one of my successes. Everybody told me I was crazy, that I was wasting time and money. This was when we were collecting money to buy the property that we have right now. And I knew somehow I grounded it in myself and I knew that I could go against the grain in this small little thing, building a waterfall. It wasn't a huge waterfall, but it was tall. It was 30 feet tall. And I did it. I didn't know how to do it. I didn't, I wasn't a landscaper. I didn't do any of that stuff. I just had the vision and I grounded it and I made it happen. And maybe it helped us sell the property for enough money to get our new property. Maybe it didn't, but I think it did. <laughs> and, and so many people thought it did. And so many people were inspired by moving through the resistance. So back to the core thing that we're talking about. And what I'm trying to help you with through my own struggles is... How to deal with the confusion, the depression, the stagnation when it arises. You can't just run to your happy place. Sometimes you should. <laughs> My happy place is surfing. Um, mainly surfing, sometimes fishing, sometimes snorkeling, sometimes diving, um, and actually just puttering around on my property without an agenda, uh, with actually just going out and allowing the uh, teenager in me to just tinker. Um, those are my happy places. So you can go and get recharged in those happy places. The problem is, is they're not gonna get you to the next level, to the goal place. So you have to keep visiting the goal. And, you know, for me, the path has been to express it in the world. Um, so I think on one level, now I'm just guessing because uh, I'm not you, and any teacher who tells you this is the way to do it, they are not being 100% true. They'll kind of smile like this. Or like this. Half of their mouth will go up because part of the truth is hidden in their smile. One of the ways that works for me is putting down what I've learned in the world. But for you, it may be putting it down in an art form, on a painting, in a journal, uh, in a video, in a blog post, in a, uh, uh, in a wall that you built. You could actually put papers in a wall. One of the things that you have to do is you have to take what you're working with, confusion, anger, pain, sadness, stagnation, and you've got to put it in your life somewhere. Maybe you make a little painting and you put it on the wall. Maybe you put some time, maybe you put some time into your calendar. If, now here's the caveat, only if you're the type of person who treats your calendar as sacred, as non-negotiable. Um, the key to making change is to feel more, is to allow yourself to feel ugly feelings while you're moving in the direction of your goal. So for me, again, I want to be the teacher that I've always wanted to be. 
that I've not always, but that I've dreamed of. It's very important to be specific. So to be that teacher, I'm going to face a lot of fear about being judged, about people hating this video, people trolling it and saying, what a douchebag, what a dick. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's so full of shit. And I got to put it out anyways. So I'm going to post this video in its entirety and hopefully it'll be useful to someone. You know, I had a visionary experience once. I don't recommend hallucinogenics, but in my early years, I mean, I don't not recommend them either. Again, you're playing with fire when you're playing with things that tap into the unconscious and you need guidance and support. That's why in so many of those traditions, whether it's Sufi mystics or um, South American shamans who are all the rage in Western spirituality these days, they had teachers. Those teachers pointed out roadblocks. They pointed out dangers. You know, all of those epic adventure movies of all time, the fantasies that you've ever watched, the, the uh, hero's journeys that you've seen um, from Luke Skywalker to uh, Avatar to um, the latest episode of Witcher on uh, Netflix. All of those are tapping into something that's true. Your heroic journey to the place that you want to be is fraught with danger. And there are times when you need to heal and rest. And there's times when you're going to make bad choices. And there's times when you're just going to uh, disappear into some other entity's idea. You know, that demonic entity is most likely a social media right now. And it's sucking you in and pulling the life out of you and making you think that it's real. But all the while, those, that adventure is so worth having. It is, you know, right now, I'm afraid, I'm tired, I don't know what my next move is, but I'm going to make a move. This was one move. So I guess to put it all in a nutshell, if you've made it this far, I truly thank you for listening to what I have to say. You know, uh, you let me into your mind. And that's magic. That's power. Uh, that is a gift that you have given me. That is an energy that will grow inside of me that I now have the responsibility to take good care of, to not abuse. So you at the same token have a task. You have something that you need to do now. Now, as someone who is acting as your guide, who's maybe a step ahead of you, maybe right next to you, um, you probably wouldn't be listening to me if, if, if I was somehow behind you on your path. Um, but the one rule that I will leave you with is try something that seems to answer the problem of the confusion, the mild depression, the stagnation. And do one thing, one real thing, not a thought, not just a journal note, but a real thing in your life that actually impacts your world in some way. You know, whether it impacts another, and you could share it with somebody if you're truly trying to open their mind and open, well, you got to open their heart. The mind doesn't open. The heart opens. The mind receives. That's great. I never have articulated that before. The mind, the heart is the gate. <laughs> You know, if it's closed, nothing will enter the mind. So the, the, you have to open the heart and then you get into the mind. So if somehow your heart has gotten opened and you're now in the mind, those two battling parts of yourself in constant, constant negotiation with one another. What I'm telling the mind, and I hope the heart will hear, is you must try something different. You must try something new. 
uh, that you have not done before, or you have to take something that you've done before to an, another level, and it has to be real. You know, one of the things that pisses me off more than anything else is New Age rituals. Because they're all, and even rituals of old religions, where people just go through the motions, and they don't really, I just go like that, so, so, uh, that was, there was a false, there's a falsity in there, because I lift the side of my mouth. Let me see. The truth is, we have to believe our rituals. <sighs> I'm just checking to see if that's actually true. You know, we have to be humble. We have to be humble. We have to be humble. So in that moment where I wanted to eh, 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 sort of speak out the truth, eh, it wasn't really true. We have to be humble in our... So when I was talking about anger, anger, eh, part of me got twisted up. I get angry in myself. <laughs> That's the truth. I think it's outside of myself, but it's in me. I get angry when I try to feign a ritual, when I try to say that this is something real, but I don't believe it. So my mission is to do rituals that are real in my life. I did one on the solstice and it felt real to me. I tried with all my heart to burn away the things that were in front of me. I took action. I created a sound bath vision quest that I had never done before. I led the vision quest. I had never done that before. That was new. That was a new action. I created the most authentic ritual for me that I could. I don't know about anybody else. Everybody else might have been faking their way through it, and I can't control that. All I can do is try to create the most authentic ritual and action for me. So don't go burn something on your altar if your heart's not in it. Only go burn something in your altar if you're afraid. If something comes up in you that's shaken or opened. You know, if you didn't do it, and it's fine if you do, but just know that you didn't get there. Just know that you have to go deeper next time. Don't pretend that, like in The Secret or some other New Age Law of Attraction idea, that all you got to do is sit back on your haunches and let the subconscious do its work. It doesn't fucking work that way. You have to be in the process with your subconscious, constantly engaging. All of the miracles have come from people obsessed on things. I'm not saying you need to be obsessed, but obsession is a very quick pathway. It may destroy the rest of your life, but it'll certainly open up doors that were closed to you. Balance is an awesome path and a very slow and frustrating path. So again, the last thing that I want to leave you with is ground. If you felt a truth in your life here today, ground it in your life in a new way. Unless you've done it in a way before that actually got you the same change that you're looking for. Then repeat only deeper. Okay, so this is, is a little bit weird for me. Not in, it means the God. Oh. Okay, something happened. Oh, we're in a new video, I think. Okay, namaste. This is weird for me. I'm practicing radical honesty. I don't like doing this because there's so much mass. I'm not Hindu. I don't want to be Hindu. You know, I want to be what I am. And I am a student of all philosophy, all religion, all story, all fiction, all imagination, all psychology, all science, all of it. I'm a, I'm a student of that. I'm not a student of one particular religion. So you, what are you? What truly are you in your deepest heart of hearts? Answer that question and then take an action that's consistent with that. One of the reasons that I've been struggling with these YouTube videos is that I'm trying, I've been trying to learn from other people and that's okay. But my truth 
my, I don't want to say my truth. I believe there is one truth and that truth is nature, period. I don't care what you call it. I don't care if you call it God. I don't care if you call it science. I don't care if you call it Mother Earth. Nature is it. That's the one truth. Humans map onto nature. We map religion. We map science. We map mythology. We map, imagina map imagination. Now we have a way to tap into that truth. It is through the unconscious. It is through our own being. In the traditions of the individual spiritual experience, it is only through your own body, mind, heart that you will achieve the highest levels of peace and happiness and joy. I like this symbol. It's a wonderful symbol. It comes from a different culture than the culture that I came from. I would like to honor the God in you from the God in me. I don't really know what the God in me looks like, but there's something about that that's real for me. So whatever it is real for you, I honor that from whatever's real for me. I don't pretend to understand what your God is, and I don't even really understand what mine is completely. I just keep trying to keep the conduit open, or keep trying to open it when it shuts. And I suppose the last thing I'll leave you with Although I've said that several times right now, so I'm not keeping my word. Um, but I want to say one more thing. The farther down the path of fulfillment, enlightenment, success, worldly success, spiritual success, whatever you want to call it, the more important your humility practice becomes. Now, I'm just learning about that. I'm halfway through my success journey. I got about half of what I've been looking for. I did transcend self-hatred, self-loathing. I did manifest a family. I did manifest a stable home in a difficult place. <sighs> With some help. I can't claim all the credit. I got a little bit of help. That's humility right there. If I were to claim all the credit, that would have been false because it wasn't true. I don't know. Without any help, I might have gotten crushed. So I owe gratitude to those people that helped me. My father, my mother, um, my privileged status in society. I'm sorry if you don't have a privileged status in society. And I don't know if any of my teachings can help you. Um, but just know if you're very different from me and you're, you didn't have any support when you were younger, um, that I lived in a lot of pain too. I can't say if my pain was anywhere comparable to yours. Um, but I do believe we all, well, one way or another, have our demons to fight. So on that note of humility, I thank you again for listening. I pray the way that I pray that you find the next level of peace, of joy, of effectiveness. There is one more thing I want to say. Maybe you've already turned off the video, so it's okay, but I need to say it. We all need to do what we need to do to feel in integrity with ourselves. I used to be very angry. And sometimes the anger still hits me about the destruction of the earth. The destruction of the ecosystems that supported... Um, for lack of a better term, the Garden of Eden. You know, before humans came in, you could literally walk across the backs of the salmon that migrated up the streams. The mass migrations were, whenever I see them, 
a deep sadness grows in me because they're fewer and fewer every year. Because we don't see, as a species, the majesty and the power, the spiritual blessing of pristine ecosystems. As a mass culture, too many of us, myself included, allow parts of ourselves to go dormant and dead while the earth around us dies. So my selfish wish for you is that in your path of personal growth, that you will dig up a deep motivating power in yourself to be part of the army. I don't care that it's not a spiritual metaphor. You know, the army of warriors. Now, they can be peaceful warriors or not. I don't know what's appropriate. I don't claim to have the answers. You know, sometimes, you know, I don't know. Would nonviolence have stopped Hitler? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe, but maybe not. But whatever it is in you... that will rise up and fight, rise up and love those who you've been unwilling to love, that will help restore balance between humans and nature. I pray that we all find the courage, the wisdom, the integrity to do our part. Because it's so big, no one cannot play their part. A word to the nihilist out there. You know, there's a wonderful teaching that it's all empty and meaningless, and, and there's just no meaning to that. And every time you try to add meaning to it, that's just yours. So, there's really nothing other than your inner drive, your inner heart that will be healed by healing the earth. But that's enough. That's completely enough. If everyone were to just go out and heal their inner heart, their inner broken relationship with nature, we could say what's left of the ecosystems of this planet, of the, the living, breathing earth that has supported us for so many, many millions, billions of years. A moment of silence. Let's try it. If you go away, you go away. You are the Messiah. You are the teacher. You are the builder, the designer, the creator. All of those aspects live in you. Honor those parts of yourself and bring forth your magic into the world. That part of you, magic in you, is the part of that moves people. It's the part that moves life. It's real. It's subtle. But it's real. Have a wonderful day. Don't forget humility. <laughs>